Hello everyone, this is Leslie with Color Art. Uh, we're going to do the second layer to this cradle board. I'll give you guys a panned out look. Um, I'm kind of liking this little section right here. It's kind of got an enamel and a shell effect, how all that area is changing. I was doing this to cover up another canvas. You can see some of the warm colors from the previous pour below. Uh, and we're going to kind of use this as a backdrop for another layer. But it's been a while since I've showed you guys how the resin art pigments work. Resin art is a dry epoxy paint system. We have literally milled epoxy color and mica and metals and other minerals to make this. Uh, it's a dry paint, but they're going to look like kind of luscious pigments in the jar, but don't be fooled. These are not mica pigments. They're only going to work in resin. These are not designed for anything else. So I today I'm using art resin for my resin and stone coat for my sellage. So I have my art resin here. Uh, I've been asked a couple times, will art resin work? I've already mixed up approximately three and a half ounces of the hardener and the resin. Hoping that's enough. This is a 20 by 20 board. I'm doing another layer on. Uh, last night the 20 by 20 was completely perfectly covered with this much resin, but we'll see if I need that for this that much for this next layer. I'm going to reserve some clear. I'm getting a little bit heavy. I'm going to pour some of this off. I do need a cup with some clear in it. Just anything seems a little bit heavy. I can always mix more, but I can't take it away. So I need a little reserve clear. And I'm also going to mix up just some straight interference violet. Like I don't have it in a jar yet. I just have it here. Um, we did get a really beautiful shipment of mica in that has some extra bling. We'll be repackaging them for the uh, resin art line so people know which one it is. It's not the normal interferences, but today I'm going to use the violet because as I use that as a sheer color, it'll float over this backdrop of that green and wherever else it's being mixed to give me some special effect. So this will take the longest to dissolve because this is straight old mica pigments. Interference violet. Okay, I'm going to put a generous amount in that one. And I'm going to let that sit the longest so it has a chance to just float down by mere weight because regular mica you have to beat to disperse it. It will not dissolve. It is, it's got nothing in there to help it dissolve. Okay. The rest of the colors that we're using are Dragon Gold, Blushing Lily, Purple Sapphire, Spice Ginger. I did a tile a couple days ago, if you guys saw the video, where I split the color in half and then tinted it with some of the white stone coat so I could get uh, some cells happening because the stone coat creates cells. But I don't necessarily want to use white. Come on, open up. So I'm going to use the white stone coat just a little bit of it as a tint. I'll be adding a few drops. So I got my little seal on there. I'll be adding a few drops of this to the color. So let's do that first so I can show you what I'm talking about. So I have my purple sapphire right here. These are little uh, tasting spoons that I'm using. They're flat, they don't hold much. They look really big on camera, so I'm told, but they hold about an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, and you use about an eighth of a teaspoon per ounce. In these cups, I've got about an ounce and a half each. So I'm gonna use about one and a half spoons. Okay, that's the purple sapphire. Now, like I said, this stuff mixes really fast. When we do the binding, it, it's hard to explain, but it does something beautiful to that mica. So it instantly dissolves. I mean, that's how fast it, it's already beat up. So we're going to try and experiment. 
and it's still very, very purple. And pour um, half of it off into an empty cup. Or not quite half. This is going to be my cell color. And what I mean by that is the Stone Coat by StoneCoatCountertop.com. Okay. They're white, they're black, they have a few colors in what they call their base, uh, base colors, base tints. Well, there's something in this product that makes it react and creates beautiful cells. So we're going to make a lighter shade of this violet and at the same time add a few drops of this wonderful magical material that makes cells. Okay, now why I can do this? Why can I do this? Because resin art is just pure epoxy color and minerals. There's nothing else in there that's going to disturb what's in this base. You cannot use this with acrylic paint. You should not use this with inks. You really shouldn't use it with anything that hasn't been tested and recommended because you can get marshmallow. You can get a reaction. But it just so happens that the resin art, like I said, is just pure color. So I knew, chemistry-wise, since I make this stuff, yes, I'm the one that makes the resin art, that it would not have a problem with compatibility. So I've just made a slightly lighter shade of that violet. It's a little bit lighter on the camera. I can it'll show a little bit more in the pour because the camera here is still picking it up. Now if I wanted it lighter but I didn't want to add more stone coat, I already have this interference violet out and the color is violet. So in theory I could add another scoop of mica which I would do to any, pro, any one of our colors anyway. I'd add a scoop of some kind of interference that complements the color I'm working with and it will automatically lighten the shade anyway. But we now have the stone coat and some interference mica to lighten the value. This is going to make a really pretty, like a French lilac color, if you're familiar with our other lines. Now, this is dissolving a little bit faster than the straight mica will because it does have the resin art already mixed in there and uh, our mixing agent in the resin art does help dissolve faster. So when I have my light violet mixed, I'm going to take some of my spiced ginger, about a scoop and a half. I have my blushing lily, very, very hot coral color with some violet mica like a violet shimmer to it. Get all these jars. I don't want to knock these jars off, so it's kind of important I get the open jars out of the way. Um, this color is dragon gold. Got to have a little bit of gold in everything we do, right? A little bit of bling. Get the lid for this one on. Okay, so. I've got my colors here, and a couple of them still need to be mixed. Here's some clear. I needed some clear. I like to use clear for lubrication on the canvas. Keeps the colors flowing. So I have my light and dark violets, purple sapphire. This is my spice ginger. So you can get close-ups of these being mixed. It's nice to see the color as the magic's happening. This is the lily, blushing lily. I should be breaking these in half, by the way. These are little uh, coffee stirs, little tiny wooden coffee stirs, and I normally break them in half so they're not too tall and I don't knock the cup over. So. Or got to break those in half before I started mixing. So here is the Blushing Lily. Kind of a hot 
coral in a lilac pearl. This is our dragon gold. Now dragon gold actually has ground metal in it. It is an antique gold. I am coming out with a uh, more yellow gold soon. Now this I'm going to predict will take the longest. This is straight mica. People do say to put the mica on the bottom of her poofs up, so I'm going to move this really slowly. Now this is how long normal mica takes to break down. As you can tell, ours did. The reason why mica does not dissolve, it has to disperse, it has to be broken down. This is a really beautiful shimmery color though. I am absolutely loving this color. We'll have this available soon. Once our next shipment comes in, we'll, we'll jar some of these up. This is pretty extraordinary. You can see it on the camera. Real pretty colors. I am a little bit uh, nervous about what I'm about to do because every time I make something that I like, I'm always a little worried about, okay, do the next layer in what if I screw it up, right? <laughs> Last thing you want to do, screw it up on the camera. So let me um, get my board back. I'm going to reset these up sitting into the side. I'll be right back with you. Tell you what, I'll compromise. I'm going to do it like this. have to go out with the camera a little bit. But we're going to let it do what it wants to do. And I'm going to do the figure eight from the farthest point. So I realize it's probably the exact same points, but it feels like I have more space this way. Now when he did the figure eight, I've got to leave room for it to actually eight. That's the purple sapphire. Next, I'm going to put down this, uh, I'm going to put the clear on the outside. So this is violet, inner birds violet, mixed in clear resin, encasing the outside first. This is the spiced ginger. This is a little bit of dragon gold. I don't want to go over crazy on the dragon gold. Okay, crazy, but I'm going to actually put the, oh, actually this has to blow over on the outside. So one thing I've forgotten, I got to remember, this is that lighter, lavender that has the stone coat in it. I'm going to put it right here on the outside of the clear because in order for the cells to activate the color has to go over the stone coat. I mean you can still get cells by dropping it in but basically that's how you do it. Okay. Now the blushing lily. I'm going to put some of this clear in the middle. This is the clear with the interference violet. Hope this works. I watched him do this in. Uh... So now I have the interference on the outside in this. So the next color would be. The ginger peach, excuse me, spice ginger. Oops. 
I'm going to do a little bit more of the blushing lily right here. And I'm going to end with this right now. I'm only going to use a tiny bit of that dragon gold until I see how much um, that spiced ginger is adding yellow and gold to this. Okay, time to heat this up. I know that it can't float unless I have clear out here. I want enough resin for it to move, but I don't necessarily need it to go to every corner. I just want it to be able to flame out. Okay, so to encourage it, it's going to float it out in one direction, see if this works. If I be creating a pattern in the clear, does it encourage it to float in the way that I'm doing it? We'll see. It should, okay? So now I've got my resin colors, purple sapphire, resin, clear resin with the interference violet, spiced ginger, dragon gold, blushing lily, some clear out here. Now I didn't make up any black yet, did I? I think I should before I really get going. I'm not going to use much. Oh, God, please open up for me. I just want a few drops available. Just a few drops. So I have a tiny bit of clear on the bottom of this one cup. I'll pour some more clear out in another cup so I know I have my other clear ready just in case and just I just have a tiny bit so all I'm going to do is just kind of get the end of this popsicle stick not even popsicle stick it's that little wooden stir that's enough I just need the tint let me break that off so I don't knock it over, knock it over. and close these up I accidentally did not close my black up and I got a skin on the top I had to remove last time so even though they're challenged up open up again unless you wipe them clean, which I'm bad about. Um, it's worth it. You don't want that skin. Okay, I'm just saving the black in case I need it. All right, time to see what's going to happen here. I guess you'll know if I like it, you'll get, you'll see the video. <laughs> right?
Well, it didn't exactly go in the shape that I planned, but I am blown away by what's happening here. Again, that's awful hard. We have cells forming. Actually, really beautiful lilac cells forming. And they're forming over the topping where the green is, so I can see the green through this. So I have to decide what shape I'm going for now. Um, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Just kind of see what happens when I tilt this. crazy what it's doing. Otherwise those little finger droppy things aren't going to be able to be <laughs> stay like that. It's not going to be able to stay like that. So yeah, I got some pretty stuff happening here. I really don't want to ruin it but I'm going to try one more puddle here in the middle. this interference violet in here. A little bit of our white with the stone coat. Put some gold in here. Oops, that's a lot of gold. Some of that blushing lily. I love that color. As you can tell, I'm loving all that warm, juicy color that we're getting. Ah, what color am I missing? Oh, my spiced ginger. Not sure about this, but I kind of want a little bit of a black. I might have just ruined it. I might have just not ruined it. It's just a tiny bit, but it's, as we know, that stone coat's nothing to fool around with. So, well, it's a pretty powerful product. I'm laying clear around the edges here. So the black has something to float into. I'm also putting some of that interference violet in here for more lubrication.
Sorry for having it go for so long, but I really wanted to let the heat I'm gonna gently see what I can do to pull some of that color down here. We're really getting some really pretty purple cells in between. Wow. <laughs> that is so gorgeous in the center there. And if you see all those beautiful purple cells, of course, some of this wispy light stuff around here, where my fingers are, that's going to dry clear with those interference violets in there. We're getting some kind of red lacing over the green, some kind of pattern. I'm not sure how much I want to take this out to the edges or if I want to. I have a little bit of clear left. I mean, I've covered almost the whole thing, at least over here. I'm not exactly thrilled with what's happening over here. That doesn't look really finished to me. Of course, it's the hardest part for me to reach. It's that top half. Oop, oop, you're not even watching what I'm doing. Sorry. I'm adding some clear up here to this top. I don't know if I can scoot this down just a little bit so you guys can see. So even if I'm not going to try to completely pull color all the way out, I want clear on all those edges so it settles out. I have enough on here where it this one would justify the look of like a flood coat, like it was a full second layer. I don't necessarily want a pattern in here. I'm looking, I'm loving what's happening with the color coming from below. I mean, I'm liking this shape on this edge here, so I don't necessarily want to change it. It's an interesting space. You know, it's random, and it's kind of an unexpected space. But I'm going to drop clear in here, kind of warm it, and see if it can just kind of settle out on its own, just warm. You don't necessarily need to blow it over. Because a little bit of green on these edges is kind of making this interesting. Let me warm this up again. And we have to do each section. One little section up here that's missing right here in this corner. I didn't see it till I got here. Again, I'm going to try to leave this green, but I still need clear here so it fills in smooth. Let me know once we see it dry. Of course, I don't know. So beautiful. Oh, it looks like some kind of wild abstract flower. Not exactly my plan, and yet I kind of saw something like this in my head. Oh, uh, 
Okay, so a little pro tip. Of course, I don't know if it's a pro tip, but I find that when I'm pushing the clear back over the other colors, if I'm dropping clear, I get an area where it looks like I've got a second pour in here, which is what I'm starting to get here as I'm smoothing out this clear. Okay, so, so I have some color left. Do I put something else in there and risk ruining it? <laughs> now that's always the question, how far do you push this? Now I left off with orange, but the thing is, is I'm getting some really, really, really interesting lacing there in the middle. <sighs> I would like a little bit more violet pushed over here. And so the question is if I drop a little bit more in the middle and blow it around, is it going to keep pushing it out? Is so pretty just the way it is and oh we're getting some really interesting mm, I really don't want to mess with it let me see if I can get a close-up on this and I'll try to get my my cell phone I can use these other colors on a tile or on another piece or actually just pour them out and make a skin I love to make a nice paint skin I could put her in the center but not disturb myself if you're picking up how much that's glittering in there. That gold and blushing lily and all that violet. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. See if I can pick this up with just with the edge of this. I just can get a cast of how gorgeous that is. Get a close-up on those cells. Can you see those cells in the middle? That is that stone coat mixed with a purple sapphire. But it's hard to tell how much that gold is glittering in the middle. What I'm really liking is the other areas where that green is peeking through layer. Layer two, let me see if I can get this. There we go. You can see some areas where the green is starting to come through. I'm inclined to leave this as it is, even if I want to do something in the center layer. I don't want to mess with this. I might just put a third layer on this thing. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.